Now, why? Now, how did this? Does this all connect to? Um, <laughs> You're getting that Sorry. look on your face yeah. that I recognize a lot from dinner parties before we would turn the before we made this movie. When it'd be like the hour six of telling yeah, this story, and people are like, yeah. "All right, wait." So it's like people yeah. are still interested, but they're just like, "Wait, what's going on?" Right. So, but I want to know how it got implemented in these nuclear submarines. Well, that's the the sort of like Norma De Giacinto oh, story, right? And Cy Hirsch. And Seymour Hirsch. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's it, well, all through Bill Hamilton, essentially, is, yeah. is telling these these stories. Because there, the, there was the lady in the documentary that you guys Norma, interviewed. I, you interviewed I asked, her in front of her door. There's like a, I, I can tell the longer version of the story, but I, I basically, like, one of my closest friends was dating Cy Hirsch, a legendary investigative reporter, was dating his son. And they were living at his uh, apartment in New York. Wow. And so I was like, dude, you gotta give me size email. You gotta give it to me. And so um, she did. And I basically started trying to verify if like the story that Bill told me was true. And he was, <laughs> I mean, he was an interesting person to communicate. Uh, I was an interesting person to communicate with. And his point, his ultimate point was, I never ended up writing about Ibn's Law. So I only talk about stuff that I printed. You know, I don't talk about stuff that I did. Speculative. I don't, you know, because mm -hmm. that way it's like that. If it makes it in the New Yorker or the New York Times, it's it's real. It's fact checked. It's real. He'll talk about it. Right. He doesn't. He just as a policy doesn't talk about a th even though he pitched it to. Uh, according to Bill, he pitched it to the New Yorker, Vanity Fair, and uh, the Atlantic um, and the Washington Post. Right. Um, no, I don't oh, I no, think okay. those are the three. The, the Washington Post story is different. That's a Bob Woodward story. Oh, right, right, right. Sorry, um, sorry. But uh, anyways, I was trying to get him to confirm anything about the Insula case. And he basically said the threshold is too high. Uh, you know, on Insula, on this story. I was like, what does that mean? Yeah, what does what that does mean? What does that mean? Um, and I never, I don't know what, what he meant by that. I but mean, I, you, one speculates that the idea is like, it's such a, classified and intensely guarded secret that like you can't open that box that's inside of the intelligence community and find out the answers cleanly so but circling back a little bit um one of inslaw's clients was this um this insurance company called etna life and casualty right and because uh, they had just really quickly, they had stopped selling to the federal government after the federal government built them out of seven million dollars worth mm -hmm. of worth of contract. It was going to be the largest contract in the Department of Justice history. Um, eventually, when it was like a several hundred million dollar contract um, that it was supposed to grow into, and so they started selling it to private companies. I just wanted to throw out yeah, that it's thank like they, you. Yeah. They, they they continued on even though the DOJ had kind of like screwed them out of all this money. Mm -hmm. And so like by the nineties or late eighties, they're working with Aetna and mm -hmm. this woman. And you know, they're, they have this like promise users group where different clients could kind of all convene together for like, kind of like a breakout session where they talk about, you know, whatever, maybe bugs or new uh, software updates or I, I, you know, I'm not sure exactly what they would talk about at the promise users group meetings, but I could only imagine Probably about software, software. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and you know afterward they had kind of like built this relationship with Norma because she was kind of like really good at explaining how to use the software to new clients, and they I think they would kind of like pull her aside and like help because from like the perspective of like a I don't know a lay person she could kind of like really help people learn how to engage with this tech, mm -hmm. and um, they liked each other um and she asked after one of these users group meetings you know what's what's going on with with your case and bill had recently met um michael riconosciuto and um he's like i don't know i mean i met this guy he said that this software my our software was is is all over the world now with a secret back door in it it's part of this massive spy operation and and the cia is involved in the you know the Department of Defense and the NSA, and she's like, "Hmm. Well, I could probably help you with the with the CIA aspect." This is a story that Bill told me in 2013, and and he said, um, and, and and so then it's like Bill's like, "Oh, you can, you can help me with the CIA part." She's like, "And I I That's need to reiterate, it. this is a story that Bill told me in 2013." 
She said, according to Bill, that her husband was a clandestine services op- operative for the CIA for many years. So she basically could run it up the chain with him and see. Mm-hmm. All right, um, Bill allowed me to tape this conversation. Um, have it on tape. So, <laughs> I, you know, I wanted to find... And so then basically the story is that she calls Bill and she's like, I got this, I got this, the finally, I've got the information. What I don't have are documents to prove it. But what I do have is the story, basically, like obviously paraphrasing, but I don't want to talk about this over the phone. Come to our office in McLean, Virginia, and like, we'll get into it and I'll explain. McLean, just obvious, just fun little the fact also where the CIA is located. It's just such a it's like the whole story is in this like CIA spook, That's so Northern bizarre. Virginia intelligence universe mm-hmm. where Danny lives. Danny was born in McLean. Danny Kessler really? was born in McLean, Virginia. Just his neighbor was um, J- uh, Jesus Angleton, John Jesus Angleton. Danny's neighbor. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, dude! Like as a child, you know, like you'd see him like mowing the grass or whatever. I mean, I, I don't know that detail specifically. All I know is that. So, she says, "Okay, the you know it has this whole story about um, James Angleton. It's just that's, so that's an his, his son lives right on the street from here, or his grandson, maybe. What? Ja- and your James name's G- Danny. Oh my God, James Jesus Angleton. <laughs> He's and you kind of look like him. <laughs> like who? Danny." I thought you were the one that looked like Danny. I guess we both kind of look like him. Um, anyways, so um, right, I, the I know, norm, I'm kind, the of, I'm kind of swimming in this story because like there's uh, so many different offshoots. But this basically, is like, this is basically she, a day on in the life of production of us trying to tell the story is just like interconnected story, interconnected story. She says right. that the software is on these nuclear subs. That yeah. the Joint Chiefs of Staff like are the only people that have you know access mm-hmm. to the information. It's right. on you know it's on nuclear subs. Da, 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 da. It's all. It, I think the idea just to like kind of. Why would it be on nuclear subs? I think the idea, and I'm... I'm, Oh, it was was to, like, it was... So, it's this data tracking, uh, analytics, data mining type software, right? Mm. And so, if it was taking Soviet sonar and, like, pings, pings, and it was able to, like, somehow... uh, triangulate where underwater, you know, subs are. Subs are. That's the Got theory. It. That's that's sort okay. of the theory. I have an anecdote that I love about submarines. I was, uh, you know, this is like our eighth I'm submarine. I'm sorry. Anecdote. I'm sorry. Submarines are fun to talk. I about. I was um, photographing this. Like, actually, it was a mob wedding in Long Island, and uh, I, you know, funded my early years of research on this by working as a photographer, usually for the New York Times, but I would. Do the occasional wedding. As embarrassed I am to say, to admit that. Um, I've been there. We, I think we've, I all, think been we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. So um, basically, I meet this this guy at the wedding. We're like standing to the side. We're talking, and, and he's like, I was like, so, well, you know, what do you do? And he's like, well, I'm in the Navy. For the CIA. And I was like, well, what do you do in the Navy? And he's like, well, I'm a submarine commander. And I was like, oh, cool. So what are you guys, what are you guys doing down there? Like, what's going on down there? <laughs> and he's like, you know, very disdainful, like looks at me and he's like, dude, <laughs> if I could just tell you at a wedding what I do, I wouldn't have to do it underwater. <laughs> <laughs> You're right about that. <laughs> oh my God. That's so fucking funny, man. I mean, it's so true. Um, the the yeah. So they're using Promise and playing with the like, Vax computers, I guess. But no, I don't know. It's, the submarine shit is is wild, especially if you think about like nuclear war and deterrence and like where all the submarines go. In Annie's new book, Nuclear War, she has some this dis- the declassified uh, submarine highway lanes. Whoa! Wow. In her book that you can see, I could you can't find it anywhere online, but it shows you. The basically the submarine highways for China and Russia, and they literally come within like a, a hundred miles of the east coast of the U.S., like right off the coast of Florida, North Carolina, and then all the way up the west coast, right off the coast of Los Angeles, and wow. like they had huge circles throughout the ocean everywhere. Wow. Submarines are literally nuclear submarines are literally littered throughout the oceans. It's pretty bizarre when you think about Bing. it. 
<laughs> Bing. <laughs> Um, so then, um, so that's the Norma story. And for years I'm like, well, I, you know, her, her husband, I gotta talk, I gotta talk to her, man. I gotta talk to her husband. He confirmed all this stuff about promise. I mean, that's the thing. I gotta find her. I gotta mm. find him. And, um, there are four or five Norma de Giacintos in the United States. And I called all of them. None of them would call me back. So I'm, I don't know which one's which. But I make kind of like an educated guess, mm-hmm. and I choose this one in South Carolina. I think we say in the show it's Conway, South Carolina. It's basically Myrtle Beach, and so don't we? You know now we have funding, right? That's and so fun. we're Did you and bring your we're board. Uh, no, I didn't. Damn it! But we you know and what? It, it's we're one on thing. There's like giant road trip already, like going up mm-hmm. and down the East Coast, interviewing people, and we we're like, well, let's stop in there. And you know, Netflix is paying for our gas and our hotels and everything, so we're you know like it's hard to do this research when you're not funded right it's a lot it costs a lot of money to do like an investigation of course so um so anyways so we go we we pull up at her house and and we ask her you know her version of the story because we've only ever heard it from bill and it's like similar but different because she didn't learn it from her husband she learned it at a bowling alley which like and i'm like I'm like still like on board. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So it's just everything's the same except for one change, and that's that the spies weren't her husband, but they're at the bowling alley. I'm on board. I'm tracking along. And Zach's like, whoa, no, 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 dude, no, dude, dude, you're getting played, or we're getting played, or like she was getting played. Like, you know, that was the- something is going on here, and it is not the same story that Christian was told. Like that was sort of yeah. It's re- that's a really inconvenient thing that plagues a lot of journalists, right? When you spend so much time researching something, and then you find something that just doesn't fit, that like kind of fucks up everything that you've been the lattice work. It, it fucks up like the direction you've been going the whole time. People like to just either dismiss it out of convenience, or if it proves their story, they'll obviously use it to reinforce. What yeah, it even. totally kind of. For me, I guess, being in that moment and just having, maybe it was this, having such high expectations because we we felt like we had done the work and gotten mm-hmm. Norma and we were there on the porch and we were just so stoked. And we're, you know, we're always looking for, this whole story is like an, a, a story about addiction. It's just the story of being addicted to the feeling of like grabbing that next vine and like, oh, if I get this next thing, like we've got it. We've got the story. We've got promise. It's in the submarines. Like that that will then prove all this other stuff true. And instead it's like a freaking shovel. And we just are like digging ourselves deeper into like a hole that we do not understand. You know? And this is one of those moments where it was like, I simply do not understand what's going on here. Why where like yeah. Bill who had was such an encyclopedia and a font of knowledge for Christian. His story is simply incompatible with the details of what Norma's saying. 